Hi YouTube, welcome back to tomorrow's Tarot and Oracle channel. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I decided to pull all four queens from each one of the suits out of one, two, three, four, five, six decks, I believe, uh, just to show you guys the queens that I resonate with, that I feel embody, uh, capture the true essence of each one of the four queens. So I have pulled from the A.E. Weight Tarot, the Pamela Coleman Smith imagery. And I'm going to compare each one of the other decks to the, I guess you could say, original imagery. Um, because I am a Rider Waite girl and I do relate best to the Rider Waite system. So the first queen we have is the Queen of Swords. Um, I'm not sure if the glare. There we go. The Queen of Swords to me is somebody who is independent and demands independence and is somebody who is shrewd and somebody who is uh, astute and sharp-minded, sharp-witted, sharp-witted, has sharp wit, communicative, expresses herself well, clearly isn't interested in bullshit or beating around the bush, so to speak, likes to get straight down to the heart of the matter. Um, she's somebody who has endured hardship, pain, suffering, but she's come out on top and she's become so much stronger for it. So she does keep her emotions quite close to her chest and isn't so quick to share or, that, or divulge that part of her. But when she loves, she loves fiercely. She's somebody who's about truth and justice and you don't lie to her. She's not interested in that. She can sort of smell uh, a weasel miles away. She's not interested in, in, in anyone that's not on the straight and narrow. She's somebody who is a transformative energy and somebody who has so many enthralling ideas and, and, and clear vision. So the Queen of Swords is often associated with a widow as somebody who's really endured that kind of loss and suffering a tragedy in her life, uh, maybe a divorcee um, or somebody who uh, just, I don't know, maybe a spinster or somebody who just really wants to be on their own and tackle life from a more mindful, uh, logical standpoint rather than emotional ties and relying on, on that sort of thing. So in the Pamela Coleman Smith, I should just say that it's not my favorite artwork. I have struggled with the Rider Waite original um, depictions of the different archetypes and, and that because I do like it, but I don't love it. It doesn't really speak to me in the same way that other depictions do from, from other artists and other decks. So I don't love the way she looks in this particular uh, card. Um, but that is sort of the general imagery of the Queen of Swords. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so she has her she has her sword upright, and basically, you know, she'll cut you in half if she doesn't like what you have to say. So, the first Queen of Swords that I'm going to compare the Pamela Coleman Smith too, is the Sylvia Gaines, I have to just check to see how to say her last name, Gainsford? Yep, from the Tarot of the Old Path. I have showcased this deck before on my channel and she looks like this and I absolutely love her. Look at her facial expression. She is not interested in any nonsense she can take care of herself. She is self-sufficient. I just think she's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Um, another example of a Queen of Swords that I thought was well depicted is from, sorry, my boxes are all piled up here. 
the Golden Wheel Tarot, the artist Mila Losenko. Oh, no, don't fall. And she looks like that. Fierce warrior woman. I grew up watching Xena, so <laughs> I love it. Well, that reminds me, actually, um, I don't have her here. She's an honorable mention. I'll have to remember to mention it later on if I don't forget. But I love the way she looks. And I love the way that it's snow in the backdrop of the suit of swords in the uh, Golden Wheel Tarot. That it's a, a new release of this year. So I've had it for a little bit. And I, I think it's really, really quite pretty. And I think it reads reads quite beautifully. So you can see again the difference. I just feel like the two examples that I've shown you thus far have more personality. They're more three-dimensional than the original. I mean, don't get me wrong. The original is still the original and it, it is beautiful in its own right. And I do like it, but I just feel like I connect more to imagery that is just represented in a more appealing way, in my opinion. The next uh, Queen of Swords that I'm going to show you is from a tarot deck that I absolutely adore to death, and that's the Dark Mansion Tarot. Oh, I just think this is such a cool deck. Um, she looks like that. I am trying to see who the artist is. Uh, Magdala Kexen. Kexen, sorry if I'm not saying that right. But I'm comparing now her representation of the Queen of Swords. And I just think she is, like, spot on for me. I just love it. She has this very austere look, you know, all covered up. I love the butterfly thoughts and ideas and transformation. She's also holding her sword upright. So I really like that representation. And then what do we have here? Two more to go. This is from the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot that I just received. A little scary view. The artist is the same who did the, um, oh, it's not here, it's in my room. Uh, what was it called? The Art Nouveau, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? It eludes me. But anyway, she is the same artist, Julia F. Massaglia, and she just came out with this deck. And her representation of the Queen of Swords looks like that. I love the clouds on her shirt. I actually just noticed that now for the first time or her cape, rather, her um, robe. <laughs> I, I love I love that. She looks up to truth and justice. She looks up to the sky because air rules the suit of swords. Although some decks would beg to differ. Um, but anyway, I digress. So you can see that's a very close representation. So this is what I would call a rider weight clone because it's pretty much close in keeping with the original, um, but just more lively, more three-dimensional, more vivid. I like a, a closer um, portrayal. And then we have, this is an independent deck. I actually don't have the original box with me. I keep it in this, um, this Victorian green card box, but it's called the, the Clover Tarot. And I believe it's still available. And let me just find the title card. Now oh, I was hoping. Yeah, Nika Vern, Bernie. Clover Tarot. I love this deck. I can make a video if anyone's interested. I don't think I ever have. Um, but this is the queen, the sort of spinster widow witchy looking, right? She doesn't look like somebody you want to mess with. But what I like is all the very um, personal interpretations or representations rather of, of the same energy, 
essentially of the same. <laughs> Hold on, let's see if I can just grab one more card. Okay. So all of these different cards represents the same archetype, the Queen of Swords. And I really love each and every depiction. I would say my favorite that I am most drawn to, probably this one, the, um, the dark, I wanted to say the haunted house, the dark mansion. <laughs> um, but I think they're all fantastic. Okay. It's, it's taking way too long, so I probably should move along faster. So the next, the next queen is the Queen of Wands. Now I prefer her coloring in other decks. I'm not super wild about the way it looks in this one, but anyway, she's just a very fierce, warm, loving, animal lover, passionate, commanding woman. I guess all the queens are commanding, but she's just she she just bursts with exuberance, like. You know, personality and confidence. And I'm not going to show all the boxes again, but from the Tarot of the Old Path, we have her, and I think she's just gorgeous. I love the red hair and freckles. It's how I see the queen of, well, rods, wands, because I find, you know, it's a fire sign, so I really agree with that. I know there are traditional... Um, traditional, you know, descriptions are of how the queens or the courts are like dark haired, olive complexion, whatever. And I mean, it doesn't jive with everybody. And I mean, there's so many more different skin colors than just, you know, olive or like a pale, you know, but I just love the way they depicted her in this instance. I absolutely think she's stunningly beautiful in the golden wheel. I hope that's coming out clearly. I think she's just gorgeous. And I, again, I can't help it. I'm pretty biased right now. But the um, the Dark Mansion Tarot, I love her. I think she's so great. She really captures the energy for me that makes the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands, a very fiery, fun-loving, passionate, confident, can be aggressive at times woman, just somebody who loves fiercely. And here is the Golden Tarot Art Nouveau. I actually really like her. Um, I guess I should just, I was comparing each one at a time, but it's taking way too long. And then there's the, from the Clover Tarot. The Clover Tarot has nudity. Um, so that might not be for everyone, but I really like the artist depiction. And of course she has her black hat. And I, again, my favorite, the Dark Mansion Tarot, I just, I, I find really appealing. <laughs> I think that's just so great. Okay, so next we have, I think I just made a mistake here. Hold on, I put it in the wrong pile. Okay, the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is somebody who is very empathetic, possibly psychic, clairvoyant. Somebody who feels deeply, who can, you know, suffer through bouts of melancholia, melancholia, um, you know, depression. But she's somebody who's more interested in the well-being of others than her own. Sometimes she can be overbearing, but she's just somebody who is very sensitive and very intuitive, very perceptive, very warm and loving and nurturing. I mean, all the queens have that ability, but she really has it, I think, the strongest in a more inward and Taking that and, you know, reflecting that on the outside world so she can do everything she can to make everybody feel love, loved and accepted. And the Queen of Cauldrons from the Old Path Tarot is fantastic. I think she's just so beautiful. From the Golden Wheel Tarot. I also really like that, that depiction. I love the swan. I love how regal she looks. And the Dark Mansion Tarot, the Queen of Cups. I love that. <laughs> I just think it's so fantastic. It's such a great deck. Highly recommend. But they're all really, really nice decks. I do have them. So um, I guess I must like them for one reason or another. And then 
from the Golden Tarot Art Nouveau deck. Um, she's okay. Not my favorite Queen of Cups, um, but not bad. I thought she was also a pretty decent representation. And then last but not least, the Clover Tarot. There you go. There's that nudity I was mentioning, but I think she's just so beautiful. I just, I see the Queen of Cups with blonde hair. Um, with that being said, none of the other ones have it, but I really think that I love how she's in the water with all her fish friends and she is in the cup. Holy grail. She is, you know, this representation of spiritual being or of spirituality. And I really think that's quite beautiful. Yeah, I just realized actually that she's the only one with blonde hair. Um, but I, again, I just love the detail and the artistry here, the illustration of the Queen of Cups. Never really been my favorite on the of the Pamela Coleman Smith. But again, it could also be the coloring of this particular. Um, I've had a couple others, but this is the one I'm left with at the moment of the writer B. Okay, last but not least, because I got to end this video, is the lovely Queen of Pentacles. She's just somebody who loves to luxuriate in her surroundings, um, using all her senses, somebody who's very hardworking and business orientated, and somebody who loves to, you know, is very into the decor, like the, the interior design or her, you know, like I said, her surroundings and, you know, devoted mother and wife and friend and somebody who's very committed and very loving and who likes nice things. And the Queen of Pentacles and the old tarot path, I have to say in this instance, she might just be my favorite. That's why I bought the old tarot path in the first place because I, I loved her so much. She's actually depicted on the front of the box. I just think she's, I think she's super gorgeous. I love that Renaissance um, sort of depiction. Um, I don't even know what order I was showing everything in. The Queen of Wales from the Golden Tarot Path is also quite beautiful. It's got that very Eastern European flair, which is nice. And then we have the Dark Mansion Tarot. I, I adore her with all her gems and jewels and her hair and oh, with all the detailing. I love it. And then we have the, the Golden Tarot Art Nouveau. I feel like I get Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. I don't know how many times I've said that all mixed up, but... I like her too. She's quite beautiful. Um, and then we have the Queen of Pentacles from the Clover Tarot, Earth Mama. Her and the Empress are very, very similar in my mind. There she is. She's breastfeeding and she's one with animals and one with the earth and just luxuriating in in her, in her surroundings. Um, I do have some honorable mentions that I just remember now, or thought of now. Um, tarot of Inspiration. These are all very well-known Im images that, has, that have been taken from various sites and it's sort of, it's done in a way that it's collaged and it's, it's been um, manipulated. So it's the original art, but then it's sort of, it has its own flair. And I just wanted to show you, I just thought of this now and I should have shown this in the beginning with the Queen of Cups, that romantic um, sensibility, that just beauty in, in being a dreamer and being sensitive and, and dreamy. <laughs> and then I have the, let's see if I can. So the Queens are some of the mo most important portrayals in a tarot deck. It's what I look for. So there are a lot of cards, you know, for a lot of people that can make or break 
whether they feel drawn to a deck or they end up purchasing a deck or not. And uh, the queens are big for me, core cards in general, among other cards as well. But I really feel like they are the like the epitome of, of all this, all the different suits and how they evolve. The Queen of Swords, I think she's great. I know some people are kind of sick of seeing that traditional spinster, widower, or witchy looking woman. Um, let's see, what did I do? The Cups and Swords. So I need wands and pentacles. The pentacles, here's the wands. I never really 100% agreed with this depiction of the wands, um, but it's okay. She has her cat. And then I'll quickly find the pentacles. Pentacles, where are you? She's my, probably my favorite pentacles queen. Well, next to the old path. <laughs> I think I missed her, so I'm going through it again. Oh no! How can I leave this out? Oh, here she is. Okay, I just went through her a couple times. It's a Rosetti, and I just think she's fantastic. That Albany hair, and I think, where is it? I don't know where she went. I was gonna find Oh, here we go. My two favorite Queen of Pentacles of all time. To me, that embodies the Queen of Pentacles. And, I mean, if someone had to ask who I resonate most with, on any given day, I would give a number of different answers because it could be a combination of two or three or all four or, you know, but I really feel like the Queen that I look for the most in, in any tarot deck is the Queen of Pentacles. And before I end this video and clean up my mess, which thankfully no one can see, um, I'm going to show you the best, in my opinion, of course, the best Queen of Swords ever. And that's in the, well, it's in the first edition of the um, Romantic Victorian, Victorian Romantic Tarot. But this one's the Russian edition. I actually sold my first edition that I finally got my hands on because I didn't really need it and I thought this was a better print copy of those images. So the best Queen of Swords, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar. I just think she is, I prefer her to the one that they replaced her with. Um, sorry guys. She is, oh no, that's the wands. She's about to pop up any second. Hold on. Wow. Is she all the way at the end? That's crazy. There she is, almost at the end. This is her. That is, I love that depiction of the Queen of Wands. I think that is, in my opinion, the best, if not like in the top three best Queen of Wands ever depicted. Sorry, Queen of Swords. I don't know how many times I just said ones, but Queen of Swords. It's in Russian, so if you can read Russian, but it says the Queen of Swords. And that's that. So I just wanted to share with you um, some of my favorite depictions of the queens from all four, four suits. Um, I'm sure there's more. I have a number of decks, and I just thought I'd make a quick video and... And share that with you guys. So thank you for watching. And I hope to see everybody very soon. Take care. Bye.